All right, uh, just giving you some uh, updates. Um, we did add uh, Kairos Tonga uh, to the injury report. Uh, he was limited today, um, just de dealing with a little knee soreness. Um, he'll be uh, kind of a game time decision, but we'll put him in as questionable. Uh, Justin Jefferson was uh, limited, uh, ramped up his work all week long. He's doing great. Uh, he'll go in questionable. Uh, B.A., uh, Caleb Evans, Jaron Hall, and T.J. Hawkinson and Nick Mullins, they will all go in after full work uh, with no injury designation. Can when you say Justin ramped up, what what more did he do this week or even today than he had done previously? Uh, he, you know, took part in some team reps, um, you know, consistent work here and there. Uh, getting him prepared uh, if he's able to play. Uh, we want to find that balance where we're not pushing him uh, potentially too far uh, too soon. Uh, constant communication with him um, throughout the practice, see how he recovers, and uh, really the timeline that, uh, you know, he's been on. He's, uh, he's been great in every facet of his rehab. So uh, it's been good to see him back out there in the huddle with the guys, and uh, I know everybody's pretty fired up for when we get him back. Yeah, but you said yesterday that when he feels well, he'll play. Um, and I know that's how he feels, and obviously you guys have to do your evaluation. Um, are you prepared, or do you feel you need to you know, come to a point where you say no, even if he does feel well? Um, I don't. Uh, you know, with the way the communication's been throughout the whole process, I don't see that being a scenario because uh, of how much he wants to play. Um, I think it's just uh, it's something where uh, we know we've got a lot of football left ahead. We, we also know we've got the bye week next week um, that, that gives us possibly an extra week of preparation uh, for him to feel like he's got more and more work, you know, ready to go. But, uh, you know, if you ask some of his teammates, they'd probably say he sure looks ready uh, to roll right now. And that's what is the tricky thing with an injury like this is he's he's getting great work in. Uh, he's preparing himself for, for when uh, he's ready to roll. And, and we're doing the same thing uh, as an offense and as a football team. So I, I think it's just a matter of, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, this is not really something where um, there's a lot to uh, invest time or energy in uh, to try to figure it all out. It comes down to a, you know, the best receiver in football trying to get to 100% so we can get him back out there, not just for any short-term burst, um, but for a heck of a lot longer than that. So how will you judge that he's fully 100% or how will the group judge him? Yeah, I think it's, first of all, it's the medical opinions much more than my own uh, because uh, that it's, it's something where I see uh, Justin Jefferson steps on a football field, he's going to look ready to go, and, and it's, I'm lucky that I don't have to make that call. Uh, my role in this is making sure the communication between the medical staff, our trainers, Justin, uh, and, and, and myself is, is top notch, and everybody's on the same page minute to minute, you know, as he takes more and more reps like he has, uh, and we feel like we're in a good spot on that. Have they told you yet if he's 100%? Uh, have they told me? Yeah. I, I think we find out um, a little bit more each day. This, the, these injuries aren't really like you, you know, hey, I know for sure I'm there. Uh, it's more of a, you know, repetitions that feel game-like with zero, uh, you know, with zero kind of post-snap, you know, worry or feel or anything. And, and that's when he truly feels uh, like he'll be at 100%. And like I said, you know, he, he was in for all the allotted reps we had for him today um, and, uh, you know, did a great job with all those. Has it responded the way that you thought it would when you've ramped up his, like, has the response to each yes. day been? Yes, exactly kind of the expectation. Does yep. it matter that he hasn't had a practice where he's just done all the reps, all the reps he would normally do if he had to do No, because, you know, I think it's a scenario where, you know, when, when that happens, it more than likely will be a consistent thing uh, happening. So that's part of the ramp up is getting him to that place uh, where it's not just one day, it's, it's three, three or four really good days of preparation in a game week. And like I said, he, you know, as far as you know, his normal allotment in November uh, after a grind of a season, it's never going to be the same every single day, um, especially with the group that we have and getting you know, our, our whole skill group and receivers and tight ends ready to go. You know, we're we're kind of looking at it like you know every rep matters for him and in, in his ramp up, but also uh, making sure that you know we're getting the whole offense ready to to play as well. Kevin, uh, yesterday Justin talked about some of his frustration with social media reports, criticism, that sort of thing. I guess what is your message to him about dealing with some of that stuff that uh, seems to have um, just.
just upset him during this time? Yeah, my message to him was uh, it's uh, it's I understand his frustration and uh, I feel for him, but uh, I also this is out of a place of people loving to watch Justin Jefferson play football. Um, I know that there's uh, some folks that you know through fantasy football and all those things out there that uh, you know uh, it's part of the NFL world we live in now and fans reaction to that but in the end I think our Vikings fans are great fans and they just want to see number 18 back out there again and the anticipation of that uh, you know, look Justin and I are right there with them but that doesn't change the fact that we're going to be uh, smart about what's best for Justin and, and his long-term career here and um, I think we'll all look back and, and hopefully be thankful that uh, the this, this situation's been handled the way it has. And, and as for, you know, we've kind of gone down that road, you know, through a couple different uh, variety of ways where, you know, I'm always in, con I, I want to know what's going on with our players and, and the players on this team so that I could be a resource of support for them. So when I talked to Justin, it was more so, you know, we're, Every single day you're doing more and more, you're getting ready to roll. Is this is Monday night going to be the night? Um, that remains to be seen, but uh, we know you've done everything in your power to be out there, not only with your teammates, which means the most to him, uh, but out on the field for our fans as well because they mean a ton to us. So um, I I feel the frustration, um, but that's not going to change the fact that we're going to do what's best uh, for Justin. The message of finishing out this segment of the schedule, it seemed like it was pretty important to you early on in the season. Yeah, I mean, after, you know, really after the start we got off to, uh, you know, every every game is kind of its own individual segment at this point. And, uh, you know, we're coming off of a tough loss on the road. I just think it's really important going into the bye that we uh, continue to put together uh, really good plans. Our, our players had another really good week of preparation. We used the extra day, which I thought was a real benefit. Um, and I think the guys are ready to roll. You know, we, we want to get back to U.S. Bank Stadium. We've had some uh, you know, some really good performances there as of late, and I think our fans have been a huge part of that. The energy, uh, the juice, we know it'll be there. Monday Night Football division opponent uh, that's playing pretty well right now. So it's going to be a heck of a challenge, but uh, very, very important that, uh, you know, the rest of the way here every single week is going to feel uh, like this one feels, which is an important, important game for where we hope to get to. How far have you seen Ivan Pace come from the first day of camp to now? Yeah, it's, you know, he... That was one of the great things about Ivan is just how he started out, even going back to the very first time he stepped on the grass at rookie minicamp. He stood out. Um, and then you're just kind of waiting for when's that drop off going to be? When's that, uh, you know, when are those times where he's going to look like a rookie and rightly so as an undrafted guy that made our team? Uh, and it just never really happened. There's been some real growth moments for him um, where, you know, he's immediately kind of put in an action plan coming out of a, a performance. Hey, these are the things I need to work on. And you see him show up the very next week. It's, you know, kind of a hallmark of a, of a good young player. They don't really make the same mistakes twice. They learn from the reps that they get. And it's just he's benefited from a lot of, a lot of reps, especially as, as of late with Jordan being out. So uh, I think having Jordan in that room as an example and kind of leading that room has been huge for a young player like Ivan, and, and uh, I'm excited about him. He just keeps getting better and better and more comfortable. Uh, now he's the green dot guy and, and communicating throughout the whole defense. Uh, those reps are really, you, you can't put a, an amount on that as far as the, you know, the importance in his development and, and where he's going to get to. He's, he's had a really good year. It seemed like the Saints and Denver both use spies sometimes with uh, Josh. Yeah. How does that change what a team can do on the back end when they have a guy dedicated to his running? Yeah, team? I mean, they really have one of two choices. And, you know, uh, several times in both those games, they decided to take the guy out of the rush uh, besides, uh, you know, out of and not out of the coverage because they really have one of two choices. You can't. Unless they get to sneak 12 on the field, which in, in my time here has only happened in Buffalo one time, um, they uh, they have to pick from either coverage or rush. And uh, a lot of times it's, it might be how they rush, and it might not look like a spy, uh, but their integrity of their rush lanes have to be strong. Otherwise, he's going to get up and out. Um, or in the back end, it could look like uh, certain coverages that maybe they've shown, but then, you know, whether it's a vision player in man coverage being responsible for the quarterback or somebody in zone, you know, trying to play their zone and the quarterback at the same time. Um, so we've seen a little bit of both. Uh, Josh has really seen it with the, you know, the, the skill set he has. You know, he's got a lot more experience th than, than we do with it just because we've seen it now for uh, really two, three games, and, and I'm sure we're going to continue to see it with how he's impacted the game 
uh, with his legs. Kevin, with the, I guess the timing of this game, the fact that you wouldn't have to make the roster move until Monday, does that allow you to kind of take it down to the wire with Justin in terms of making a decision on whether he's going to go? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, we have an, until 3 o'clock, I believe, on Monday. And um, what that does is it's, it's really not any sort of, you know, uh, decision other than a health decision based upon, okay, he stacked some really good days of work. Let's see how he feels tomorrow. Let's see how he feels, um, you know, going into the going into Monday, and, and then ultimately make a decision and commit to it, and and uh, know that in the end the decision is what's best for Justin, and and uh, we know that having Justin Jefferson out there gives us the best chance to win. Um, but like I said, the big picture with this player, and, and he means the absolute world to me and this organization. We're going to do uh, what's best for him. Thanks, guys.